let's look at the units we're going to be converting and there are three pairs as I just mentioned centimeters to meters kilometers to meters centimeters to millimeters and in the opposite direction so if you look through the worksheets you'll see I go in both directions on the worksheets the conversion that the students are doing is based around the, a conversion factor between the two units so to know how we need to change the numbers we need to understand how big the relative units are and the metric system makes that really nice and easy for us and I'll explain what I mean so the centimeter has a prefix which is spelled the same everywhere centi in front of the word meter the kilometer similarly has kilo and the millimeter has the prefix milli and those prefixes have very precise mathematical meaning so centi means a hundredth kilo means a thousand and milli means a thousandth so unlike the old-fashioned British units where 12 inches equals a foot and then three three feet equal a yard and 1200 and I've forgotten however many there were <laughs> um, 5280 feet in a mile and so on all those different numbers had to be remembered they they sort of grew during history I think and so they had different numbers of units making up other ones in the metric system because it was planned in advance it's all based on 10 so a centi anything is a hundredth of something so a centiliter is a hundredth of a liter a kilo of anything is a thousand so a kilowatt is a thousand watts and so on so we use those numbers when we're doing the conversion so basically when we're converting and I'm going to just add a little bit more to this messy set of notes if we're converting a number like 150 centimeters to meters we're still going to have the one and the five and we could even have the zero as well they're just going to be in different places because this is a power of 10 and so are all the prefixes in the metric system refer to powers of 10 so centimeters to meters the conversion factor here of course is divided by 100 because these are hundredths of a meter 150 hundredths is how much and this will be 1.5 let me uh, make up a couple of questions here let's say we had 2.6 kilometers how many meters would that be the conversion factor this time is a thousand times or times a thousand 2.6 times a thousand will be 2600 and the last one of these quick examples let's say we had um, oh let's have a nice easy one nine centimeters centimeters to millimeters now there isn't a nice the prefix itself doesn't tell us we have to look at the difference between the prefixes so if this is a hundredth and this is a thousandth the difference of course is 10 so we multiply centimeters by 10 to give us millimeters and that's 90 so each of the conversions as I said is based on this idea of powers of 10 so we're going to reuse the digits in the same order the same relative positions to each other they'll just be in a new place let me talk a little bit more about that and what I'm going to say now may be to some people a little controversial but I'm going to say it anyway because basically I'm right let's go back to our question before of 150 centimeters and we're going to convert this and I just had the answer before 1.5 with or without the zero now students may want to put the zero but they don't need to it's an unnecessary zero I, either way it may or may not have a zero and as I said before here of course we're dividing by 100 none of that's controversial the controversial bit is where students learn to move the decimal point let me urge you not to teach that to your students now as I said it's a bit controversial I may have just offended half my audience I'm sorry if I've done that I don't intend to offend anybody but it's simply a really really bad idea my experience of teaching young adults who are going on to be teachers who have learned to move the decimal point is that when they do activities just like this with metric units having grown up with metric units in the Australian schooling system they get their answers wrong over and over and over again because they can't remember how many decimal places and they don't remember which way to move them left or right 
So some people literally get an answer that is 10,000 times too big or too small because they move it the wrong way, two places, and they get a you know, completely ridiculous answer because they're not thinking about the process, the quantity, the operation, and so on. Rather than that, let me strongly suggest that you teach your students to move the digits. If we're dividing by 100, every digit is going to move to the right, two places. So we'll move the digits, not the decimal point. We're allowed to move the digits because digits can go anywhere because of the place value system. The decimal point never moves. It's always between the ones and the tenths place. All right, so if we move the digits two places, where's the decimal point at the moment? Well, clearly it doesn't have one because we haven't written it, but that's a whole number, so the decimal must be just after the zero. And if we move everything this way two places, the one will end up right there. The five will be just after the decimal. Of course, as I said, the zero, we can actually drop the zero because it's after the decimal point. Okay. The other way that I would help reinforce this idea of thinking about the quantity and what's our answer going to be, you know, what sort, what you really want is what, what place is the digit going to end up in? What is it roughly equal to? I would ask a question like this. How many, I'm writing this very quickly, how many hundreds are there? Or where are the hundreds? Simply because this is a conversion factor of 100, we're dividing by 100, I'd say, how many hundreds are there? Look at this number and tell me the hundreds. So I could write a little label here. That's the hundreds. Well, if there's 100, to divide by 100, everybody knows that will be 1. And so it ends up there. So if you use questions like that, and if you teach your students to move the digits to the right place, I believe it'll be a lot clearer to them. And ultimately, when they're older and they've used this over and over again, it will be familiar to them. And they're thinking about the size of the quantity and where it ends up. So I'm not going to redo this, of course, with kilometers and meters, but the conversion factor is a thousand. And so it's three places. So depending on which conversion it is from kilometers to meters, you're going to move all the digits to the left three places. It will get bigger because the number of meters is bigger by three places and so on. Um, the other recommendation I make to go along with this is that you make up uh, what I call place value slides where you have a, a sliding piece of paper that you, or cardboard or something that you can move left and right with digits written on it and have something else in front of it showing the, the places and the decimal point and then move the digits and I think that will make it far, 